why I no longer put people on a pedestal because we're all fucked up our own way. We all have demons. Some people hide them better than other people. First big problem is that you have put a lot of people above you. Put no one above you. No one. I put God above me. Besides that, there's no one better than me. You have to become an equal. So this is how I look at it. If you're playing Roger Federer, be, be, before you get on the court with Roger Federer, he's the best of all time. But you're also a professional tennis player, man. You're forgetting your own fucking resume. So once you get on the court, let's say it's a grand slam. It's five sets. Hopefully, if you can go the distance with this guy. But before you even bounce the ball to serve it, you're down two sets. Because why? You look across and you're playing fucking Roger Federer. But guess what? You hit a good shot on Roger Federer in the third set. And you realize, I can play with this motherfucker. But it's too late. You gave up two sets before you got on the court. You got to stop giving up two fucking sets before the game begins. And we do that already. We give up two sets before the game begins. So I learned that real quick. I saw these Navy SEALs before I became one. My God, they're better than me. They're better than me. I gave up a hundred sets. And I had to work up to realize these are human beings with the same shit I have. Yeah, there's some people who run faster, swim better, but mentality's mentality. There's no, I, you're not gonna outwork me. I'm gonna catch up somewhere. Who do I use as a standard to measure myself by? It's, it's really everyone and no one. Because or there's people, in the world that have skills and strength and talent that I will never have. So what does that mean? Does that mean that I give up? Does that mean that I quit? Of course not. Not at all. It means that I'm going to try to be the best that I can be. The strongest, the fastest, the, the smartest smartest human that I can become. That's what I'm going to go for. It is possible. How close can I get to that greatness? How close can I get to that glory? My glory happens in the darkness of the early morning. In solitude, alone where I try and I try and I try again to be everything that I possibly can be the best that I possibly can be better than I was yesterday and better than other people thought I could be faster and stronger and smarter and with one victory that no one can ever take away from me a victory that is earned every single day a victory of determination and will and discipline and a victory that is achieved because I will not stop. Most people who are failing are trying their fucking ass off. Most people who are failing are being criticized by people who haven't attempted what you're even trying to fail at. So what I'm failing at, so after I, I did 2,500 pull-ups my first time going for the record. You know how many people were criticizing me? Look at your audience uh -huh. who's criticizing you, uh -huh. first of all. They're not even in your fucking world. You Don't even talk to me. Block them out. That's the first thing. When you grow up weak and you start to master your mind, because my whole thing is whenever I'm, whenever I'm weak at something, whenever I'm scared of something, I master it. I was a weak mind, you know, a weak-minded person, so I mastered my mind. And in mastering my mind, I mastered the human mind. 
And I realized why I no longer judge people, why I no longer put people on a pedestal, because we're all fucked up in our own way. We all have demons. Some people hide them better than other people. So I know we all have them. But me knowing that, I know that most alpha males are very fragile. Very fragile. They never want to see another person harder than them. Ego is serious. So if I can hurt your ego, I got you. So by me having such a fragile ego growing up, all this was my advantage. I was doing a live autopsy on how fucked up I was. I was like, hey, this fucks me up. I bet it fucks other people up too. So I started using all these different tools and tactics to get in the structure's heads. And the taking souls, that's where it happened, man. We were, we're Wednesday, freezing fucking cold. Everybody's jackhammering. Everybody's, everybody wants to, you know, everybody's just wanting to get through it now. And the instructors take great pride in watching you suffer. They do. We, you know, in a, in a sick way, it's, it's, it's kind of funny. You know, you know, you were there once as a, as a student. Now you're an instructor. But I knew, how would I be thinking if I was an instructor? I would love seeing this sadistic shit go on. But what, would I, what wouldn't I like to see? I would hate to see some guys just looking like this is just another fucking day on the fucking beach and go fuck yourself. Let's see, you know what, man? It's time. You all, I can't fight you. You guys can fuck me up all day long. That's your job, and I love your job. I love what you guys are doing. You guys are making us better. But now, I want to take the tactical advantage, and I'm going to start fucking with you. I had a couple of hardcore motherfuckers, and everybody right now is kind of like in their own world. Let's just get and do this, man. I can't wait till Friday so we can graduate. Hell, we can get going. I said, let's go ahead and have some fun. I said, we're gonna start. We're gonna start fucking with these guys. So, the evolution here was we just got through with med check, and I was like the boat crew leader of boat crew two. So I'm in the front of the boat. And I tell our guys this: is what we're gonna do. The boat's like on our heads. So all it was, we're supposed to lift the boats up above our head. That's all you gotta do. But when you're this weak, you're this fragile, you're this tired, the boat's heavy. So there's a thing you can do when you do boat presses. You can get the boat and like just toss it up. Toss it up and catch it. And that shows like you're jacked up. So everybody's holding the boat and they're shaking. And the boat's starting to come down their head and all the boat crews are all lined up and they're fucked up. And I'm looking at that and I turn around my boat and I say, hey guys, it's time to fucking take some souls. They're like, what the fuck are you talking about? I said, we're gonna get you. I go, you see all these fucking instructors out here? All in their fucking jackets and drinking coffee and laughing and smiling and shit. I want their fucking faces to go straight up fucking numb. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna start boat pressing this motherfucker. Just take my lead, trust me. You'll get energy from me. We start throwing this boat up in the fucking air, catching it, throwing it up and catching it. And we start yelling, I can't hurt fucking boat crew too. We're yelling our fucking ass off. And we're doing it. And they make a stop. Like, like, like what the fuck? Like, the stop. I look at these instructors. And their faces literally look like someone, like, just, like, took their soul out. Because I know their minds were like, they were thinking about themselves. Like, what the fuck just happened, man? I know me on Wednesday. I couldn't have done that. How are they doing it? So the rest of the time, going through Hell Week, it was like we just, we owned it. As you're trying to fix yourself and dig yourself out of this deep hole that life, society, and you helped, you helped also. Those people who you saw down there in that hole who were there with you, who were your friends and people who you counted on, because you meet the people in the same situation that you're in in life. Those people become your friends. And the second you try to get out of that situation and become better, those people are in that, in that grave, in that dungeon, just yanking at your heels. So I get that all the time now. People would constantly remind me of who I used to be back in the day. My biggest advice to give everybody in the world is like I say, we live in an external world. If you can for the rest of your life live inside of yourself, all these insecure people putting their insecurities on you, you got to flush it out. You got to just be whoever the hell God or whatever the hell you believe in. If you believe in nothing but yourself, I don't care what it is. You got to take everything and throw it away. You have to believe in one thing and that is yourself. Imagine that you are taking care of yourself like you were someone you actually cared for. 
And then you thought, okay, I, I'm caring for this person. I would like things to go as well for them as possible. What would their life have to be like in order for that to be the case? Three years from now, you can have what you need. You gotta be careful about it. You can't have everything. You can have what would be good for you, but you have to figure out what it is. And then you have to aim at it. Right now, for you to find greatness in yourself, you're not gonna find it by looking in a book or by even hearing me. I may give you the spark, but you've got to go inside yourself to find it. We're all walking around managing perfect dysfunction. Like, let's just say that. Like, there is no perfect. Pursuing perfect is a false pursuit that will always leave you disappointed. Right? And so, our job is to perfectly dance with our imperfection. One of the things that's really, really important to make familiar is praise. And one of the things to make unfamiliar is criticism. But if you can get through to doing things that you hate to do, on the other side is greatness. Your life belongs to those people who are going to cross your path. And because they cross your path, not anybody else's, but because they cross your path, you inspire them to want to be a better person. You inspire them to want to express love in the way that they hadn't thought before. You inspire them to listen with open ears and an open heart because they crossed your path. dark room, you face yourself, you realize you want to be better, you realize you don't want to be this weak, insecure person in the world who has all these problems that we all have. We all have. So that's where that dark room is. The major cause of depression are harsh, hurtful, critical words that you say to yourself over and over again. First one is clarity. Clarity meaning solitude is a wonderful time for self-reflection. To self-reflect, to go inside. When, when you're going very fast and you're driving your, your, your life very fast, you don't often have time to just say, am I going in the right direction? And so clarity can come from the power of questions. Questions give you answers. And if you ask the right questions, you'll get the right answers. But a huge part of the reason that people fail is because they don't ever set up the criteria for success. And so since success is a very narrow line and very unlikely, the probability that you're going to stumble on it randomly is zero. And so there's a proposition here, and the proposition is, if you actually want something, you can have it. Now the question then would be, well, what do you mean by actually want? And the answer is that you reorient your life in every possible way to make the probability that that will occur as certain as possible. You don't get to come in and leave without being responsible for those that you impact. And when you understand that, you're like, hold on, my life literally sends waves out into the universe. It sends waves to the people around me and it impacts the way they choose to show up in the world. When you recognize that, then the question becomes, so what are you sending? It's so easy to, you know, to, to be great nowadays. Most people are, are weak. This, this is a softened generation. So if you have any mental toughness, any, any ability, if you have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it, but still do it. It wasn't until I changed that mentality that I became somebody. Your mind is 
right or wrong, good or bad, healthy or unhealthy, it lets it all in. Your mind will do what you tell it. Now that you know that, tell it great things. What's most important to me in life? And then you make a list of those things. And then ask yourself second question. And the second question is, are the actions I'm taking each day filling those, those values, my answers? Are your actions giving you those values, fulfilling those values? So get clarity and journal and write them down. Check in with yourself.